Okay, the Gospel of Matthew. We are in Matthew chapter 24. We begin today's study in Matthew 24, verse 36. Matthew 24, verse 36. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is speaking of his return. And he says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The secret things belong to God. Deuteronomy 29.29 29 says. And the exact day of Jesus' return is one of those secret things. No one knows it. The angels don't know it. No human being knows it. And no human being will ever know it. And yet, in spite of that, some wild-eyed religious nut will come along every now and then and claim to know when Jesus will return. And they will set the date. And what's even more amazing than that is all the people that believe him. Or at least consider that he might be right. In spite of what God says right here. The last time that I recall that happening was about 10 years ago or so. Some guy, some preacher, said he knew the date that Jesus was going to return. He figured it out. And he made the Christian talk show circuit. And he wrote a book and he made lots of money. And all because people either do not know the Word of God or do not believe the Bible. Because if they knew the Bible and they believed the Bible, they would read Jesus' words here and they wouldn't be taken in by frauds. Because no one knows the day. 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. <clears throat> the people in Noah's day lived as if they would live forever. They lived as if there was no God. They were warned that judgment was coming. They were told, repent or die. But they ignored those warnings and they carried on with their sin like it was no big deal. They didn't take God seriously. They thought they would get away with their rebellion. They did not. And neither will people today. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. Those who do not make time for God those who do not take God seriously will be blindsided by the wrath of God just like the sinners of Noah's day were blindsided by the wrath of God. 40. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women <clears throat> shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Let no one be deceived. When the dust clears and this world is over and Jesus Christ returns, there will be a final separation of the righteous and the wicked. There are, they are not all together. People are not going to be all together. The good, the bad, the saved, the unsaved, we're not going to all be together. Universalism is a lie. There will be a final separation between the wicked and the good. Like Jesus says here, one will be taken, one will be left, and this judgment is going to happen very quickly. It's going to come on people very quickly. When Jesus returns, it will be as a thief in the night. When Jesus returns, there won't be any time to repent. Once you stand before Jesus on judgment day, there won't be any time to repent. And so those who do not repent today are playing Russian roulette with their immortal soul. And so that's why Jesus says in verse 42, Watch! 
Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord come, doth come. But know this, that if the householder had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. If you, if you get a tip that a burglary is going to happen in your home, that a burglar is going to hit your house tonight, you be prepared. If you don't know what time he's coming exactly, you be ready from sundown till sunrise. You be prepared every second of the night because his, his coming is imminent. You just don't know the exact second. So you're ready and you're watching. In the same way we know that Jesus is returning, we just don't know the exact minute. We don't know the exact moment of his return, just like we don't know the exact moment of our death. But we do know that one of those two things will happen in our lifetime, and they could happen today. That's why Jesus warns people to be ready right now. 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season. Blessed is that man, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and to drink with the drunkards, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day, when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I dealt with this section of scripture a few months ago. But I want us to notice it again. Notice what Jesus says. He says, if that servant, which servant? That servant who had been wise and faithful, verse 45 and 46, if that servant, that servant who had been wise and faithful, if that servant, that faithful servant, turns bad, verse 48, then he will be punished with the unfaithful. That's talking about hell. I know some people say, well, this is talking about loss of rewards, but you're still safe. It's not talking about rewards and punishment. It's talking about heaven and hell. One of the first major principles of Bible interpretation is that you interpret Scripture based on its context. This is talking about hell. The entire context of this parable is about the separation of the righteous from the wicked. We just saw that. It's about being saved or lost. So what's the lesson? The unsaved need to be prepared and the saved need to stay prepared because it's possible to be a faithful servant and become an unfaithful servant and then be punished along with the rest of the unfaithful in the place where there will be weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. That's not talking about a loss of rewards. That's talking about hell. That's how Jesus describes hell elsewhere in the Bible as the place of weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. This is talking about heaven and hell. People have to be prepared or they're going there. People have to be prepared. They have to stay prepared or they'll be lost. That's the warning that Jesus is giving. That's what this is about. Whether he's coming in our lifetime or whether we die in our lifetime, it doesn't matter. We're going to meet him and we have to be prepared. And we have to stay prepared. Chapter 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now Jesus tells a story here about a bridegroom and uh, ten virgins. And Jesus is the bridegroom in this story. The virgins represent people in general. Represents people in general. We are going to meet the bridegroom someday. 
either he will come to us or we will go to him. But just as sure as you are there and I am here, we are all going to stand before Jesus face to face, eyeball to eyeball, one on one. And so it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Five were wise. What makes a person wise in the eyes of God? Well, we don't have to guess. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what scripture says. So, some of these who were about to meet Jesus feared the Lord during their life. They were wise. They feared the Lord. The others did not. And it's that way today as well. Some people fear God. Others don't hardly even give a thought to God. Approximately 100,000 people will die today across the world. 100,000 people will either will, 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 will meet Jesus today. And some are ready, some are not. Some will be saved, some will not be saved. But the bridegroom is coming for 100,000 people today. Look at verse 2 again. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. The foolish ones represent people who have no fear of God, and therefore do not plan ahead. They don't plan for their death. They don't plan for eternity. They don't think. They don't think. What if the Bible is true? They don't think. What if there really is a hell? They don't think. What if there's really a hell for those who reject Jesus Christ? And what if that includes me? They don't think about it. They try to put other things in their mind to block those thoughts out. But the Bible says it over and over again. And Jesus talks about it over and over again. They are unwise not to plan ahead. They are the unwise ones. Verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They took lamps, which was smart, but they didn't take a supply of oil, which was stupid. They took their lamps, but they didn't take a supply of oil. In other words, they kind of started to get ready to meet the Lord. But they didn't fully prepare. They are like the person who hops a train headed for California, but only buys a ticket to St. Louis. They kind of are prepared, but they're not going to make it, because they didn't fully prepare. And a lot of people are like that with God. They kind of got some religion. They kind of are a Christian. They kind of walk with the Lord. They sort of go to church. And every once in a while, they kind of pray. But they never really repent. And they never really make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. They run out of oil. They're not going to make it. They're not prepared. They're foolish. In contrast to that, verse 4, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. The wise had containers with extra oil in them. They were prepared for the long haul. And here's the spiritual lesson. Wise people plan for eternity. Foolish people wing it, just hoping that everything will somehow work out. 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The bridegroom tarried. Five were ready, five were not. Five were prepared, five were not. And they had to wait, because the bridegroom delayed. And the groom's delay represents the length of your life and the length of my life. There is a delay before we meet Jesus Christ. How long that delay is, it varies. The delay in meeting Jesus depends on how long you live and how long I live. The delay is different for each one of us. But we're going to meet him. And the delay is not going to go on forever. 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold the the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. The day came. The moment came. And one day the delay will be irrelevant for you and irrelevant for me. The delay will be over. One day 
the number of years that we live on earth will not matter. It won't matter if we live 10 years, 20 years, 80 years, 100 years. It won't matter one single bit. Because we've got a date with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is written on his calendar. And like it or not, that's one date we're going to keep. Ready or not, that's one date we're going to keep. He's going to call our name. And we will be summoned in, into his court. And we will appear. And we won't have any choice. We will be there. Seven. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Well, it's time to meet the groom. And so they stand. They have no choice in the matter. They must stand. Ready or not, the bridegroom is here. And it's time for them to meet him. And ready or not, the time will come for us to meet Christ. Eight. And the foolish one said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. In other words, the foolish ones say, We're not ready. It's time to meet the groom, and we're not ready. We have not prepared properly. So you guys help us now. We aren't ready. We didn't prepare. We didn't take this thing seriously. So now give us some of what you've got. You're ready. We're not. So give us some of your readiness. Pass that on to us. That's what they're saying. It again. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. For our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. It was too late to receive anyone's help. It was too late. They had their chance. They had plenty of time. They squandered their opportunities. Now they want help. Now it's too late. I am willing to help anyone who wants spiritual help. I will do my best. I always try to do my best to help anyone who needs and wants spiritual help. I will talk to them. I will pray with them. I will share with them principles from the Word of God and what the Scripture says the best that I can. I am willing to help anyone get to heaven. But if they don't come to church... And they don't call. And they don't watch the TV program. I can't help them. And if they scoff at the word of God. And they continue to give Jesus the cold shoulder. There will come a day when it will be too late for anyone to help them. You can't get your mom and dad into heaven if they don't want Jesus. You can't do it for them. You can't get your son or daughter into heaven if they don't want Jesus. You can't get your husband or wife into heaven if they don't want Jesus. It can't be done. You can't help them. We get what our deeds deserve. And no one can change that for us. The Bible says everyone who eats sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. If I eat sour grapes or a sour apple, I'm the, I'm the one who's going to have my teeth set on edge, not you. And if I'm not prepared for Jesus, for my death, then I'm the one who's going to suffer in hell, not you. And you can't help me. And I can't help you. And that's just the way it is. Ten. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Those who were ready went with the groom. But the door was shut on those who were not ready. Those who die right with God through Jesus Christ will be with Jesus because they prepared. Those who are not ready when they die will have the gate of heaven slammed shut in their face and they will not get in. And many people will be surprised. 11. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. They say, Lord, Lord, let us in. As if knowing who Jesus is 
is sufficient. They call him Lord. They know who he is. And on that basis, they say, let us in. As if knowing who Jesus is, is sufficient. Well, it isn't sufficient. Lots of people know who Jesus is. They're not saved. The devil knows who Jesus is. He's going to hell. All the demons know who Jesus is. They're going to hell. They call him Lord, Lord. Like that's the key that will unlock the gate of heaven. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, they didn't do the will of the Father. So they can shout until they are hoarse, but they're not getting in. And it's not going to do them any good. They're lost. 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Jesus will say, No. It's too late. You call me Lord all you want. It's too late. I don't know you. You didn't want me when you were alive. Now I don't want you. That's what he's going to say. That's what Jesus is going to say. You didn't want me. Now I don't want you. Jesus will hear the prayers of any sinner who repents. Today, he will hear. But once that person is dead, forget it. Jesus will not answer the prayer of a sinner who dies without him. It's too late. And that may shock some people, but it's the truth. We're so used to Jesus being a compassionate, loving God that we can't imagine him not showing any compassion. We can't imagine him not being any other way or being any other way. But there is no compassion for the lost sinner who dies without Jesus. Not a bit. And so verse 12, Jesus says, He answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Too late. In life they could have been forgiven. Even if they didn't hear about Jesus, if they would have lived up to the light that they had, and they would have hungered for truth, I believe that God somehow would have gotten the message to them. I believe that. From, from how he handled Cornelius in the book of Acts chapter 10. I believe he would have done that. And then there are others who have heard the word of God all their life. Then there are others who know the truth. God gives them plenty of chances to receive Christ, but they sin those chances away. They know all about Jesus. They've heard the stories about Jesus a thousand times. They know how he was born in Bethlehem. They know how he died on the cross. They know how he was raised from the dead. They know about the five loaves and the two fish. They know how he cured lepers. They know how he raised people from the dead. They know how he healed blind eyes and the paralyzed. And they know about Lazarus. And they know all these stories. And they've heard them a thousand times. But they don't know Jesus in a personal way. And there's a huge difference between knowing the Bible and knowing about Jesus. There's a huge difference between that and knowing Jesus. And that's what Christ is talking about right here. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. 13. Watch, therefore. For ye know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man cometh. We don't know when Jesus will return. And we don't know when we will die. So we should live every moment as if it were our last. Be prepared. That's the message of this. That's the, that's the lesson of this message today that Jesus has given us. Be prepared. Get ready. And once you're ready, stay ready. And don't sin. But if you do sin, confess. And start all over again. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Next time we pick it up in verse 14. Until next time, so long everyone.